Welcome to a new episode from English Plus Podcast. Today's episode is about writing. But today we're not going to talk about writing paragraphs or essays. We are going to talk about some writing grammar. Last time we talked about the topic sentence, but today we will talk about essential things you need to know about the grammar of sentences, like commas, sentence fragment, run-on sentences, and comma splice. Because these things will help you write full and correct sentences, and that is an essential skill, not only for writing, but also to write a perfect topic sentence. So, without further ado, let's start with our very first point, and that is to talk about commas. What do we use commas for? A comma separates a list of three or more things. For example, if we say I speak English, Spanish, and Japanese, here we have three things. Of course, we can say more. But here, because we have three things or more, we can separate them by commas. We can say I speak English, comma, Spanish, and Japanese. And we can use a comma to separate two sentences when there is a combining word, like and or but. For example, We can say, I speak three languages, but Adam speaks five. And here, because we have this combining word and we combine two separate sentences, we separate them by a comma. So we say, I speak three languages, comma, but Adam speaks five. A comma separates an introductory word or phrase from the rest of the sentence. For example, we say, first, you will need to get a pencil. So, this first is an introductory word. And of course, there are a lot of introductory words, and we will talk about them in other episodes because these introductory words are used for specific purposes. But this is a very famous introductory word, first. And when we use it in a sentence, we use a comma to separate this introductory word from the rest of the sentence. So, we say first, comma, you will need to get a pencil. What else do we use commas for? A comma separates a dependent clause that comes at the beginning of the sentence. For example, when we say, because I speak three languages, I can communicate with many people. So here, because I speak three languages is a dependent clause, and therefore we separate it with a comma. So we say, because I speak three languages, comma, I can communicate with many people. What else do we use commas for? A comma separates an appositive from the rest of the sentence. And you might be wondering, what is an appositive? Well, an appositive is a group of words that renames or explains the noun before it. So, you have seen it a lot, but you might not have known that this is called a positive. I will give you an example. Fiber, a substance that is important in limiting certain types of cancer, is found in popcorn. So here, the original sentence is fiber is found in popcorn. That's all. But here I added this appositive because I want to explain about this word, which is fiber. Fiber, comma, a substance that is important in limiting certain types of cancer, comma, is found in popcorn. So there is another use of commas. And commas can separate extra information that is provided in adjective clauses. For example, the history of Korea, which is on the teacher's desk, is the book for the course. Now here, think about it. The original sentence is the history of Korea is the book for the course. But here I use an adjective clause, and that is which is on the teacher's desk, and that is extra information. The sentence can do without this extra information. And because it is an adjective clause and it is extra information, we separate it by commas. So here we say the history of Korea, comma, which is on the teacher's desk, comma, is the book for the course. So that was about commas. I hope you found that useful. Now we will move on to talk about sentence fragments, run-on sentences, and comma splice. But before we do that, let me remind you that there is a link you can find in the description that will take you to our website, englishpluspodcast.com, There you will find everything you need to practice the things we're talking about. There is a PDF practice worksheet that you can download and practice. And of course, the answer key is there so that you can check your answers. There's also a video 
that you can watch these things if you like, and the show notes are there as well. So this is an example for every single episode. We have a special post for that episode that includes all the means necessary for you to practice what you're learning here in English Plus Podcast. So take the link and improve your English. Do not risk forgetting the information we're talking about, and you can do that by practicing what we're learning, and we've got you covered. Everything is ready for you. Just take the link. You'll find everything you need. And if you like the content we're creating and you would like to support us to create more of that content, there's also a link that will take you to Patreon, where you can go there, become our patron, and support us to create more of the content you love. And now let's go back to our episode and let's talk about three common sentence problems and we will start with a sentence fragment. Now, what is a sentence fragment? A sentence fragment is not a complete sentence. It is usually missing either a subject or a verb. Or it is a dependent clause, and a dependent clause is never a complete sentence. Now, of course, that's all fine, but how do we fix it? Well, if we can identify a sentence fragment, how do we fix the sentence? Well, to correct a sentence fragment, we usually add a subject or verb, or we combine the two clauses. Now, let's take a look at this example. I went to Italy last summer, period, was a wonderful trip, period. So what we have here looks like two sentences, but actually, They're not, because yes, the first part, I went to Italy last summer, is a full sentence, but the second part is not. Was a wonderful trip, that's not complete. That is a sentence fragment, so we need to fix that. We can fix that by adding a subject, and we can say, I went to Italy last summer, period. It was a wonderful trip. It was. Now we have a subject, so we have a full sentence, not a sentence fragment. Let's take a look at another example. Only 120 students majored in art, period, because they are worried about job opportunities, period. So here we have a sentence fragment. Because they are worried about job opportunities, that is a dependent clause, and dependent clauses can never be full sentences. They have to be attached to another clause to make a full sentence. So to fix that, we can combine the clauses together, and instead of having What looks like two sentences, we have one, and it becomes only 120 students majored in art because they are worried about job opportunities, period. And that is one sentence with two clauses. So that was about sentence fragment, and that was the first common sentence error. The second most common sentence error is run-on sentences. Now, a run-on sentence is two sentences incorrectly joined without a comma or a coordinating conjunction. And coordinating conjunctions are and, or, but, so, yet, nor, or for. Now, to correct a run-on sentence, what do we do? We either add a comma and a connecting word, or we separate the sentences into two with a period. Both fixes are fine, but what we cannot do is leave a run-on sentence as it is. Now, let's take a look at this example. This example is written as if it were one sentence. There's only one period at the end. And it goes like, I went to Italy and so Rome, I didn't get to see Milan. Here the problem is that we do have two sentences here. I went to Italy and so Rome, that's one sentence. I didn't get to see Milan, and that's a second sentence. But we cannot just put them together and consider them one sentence. We have to separate them or join them with a connecting word. So, We can go with adding a comma and a connecting word, and we can say, I went to Italy and saw Rome, but I didn't get to see Milan, and that is correct. Here, after Rome, we put a comma, and but I didn't get to see Milan. Yes, it is now one sentence, but it is okay because we have a comma and a connecting word. Or we can simply separate them into two sentences. I went to Italy and saw Rome, period. I didn't get to see Milan, period. These are two sentences. I'm not saying here which is better. We will talk more about how we can link our sentences together to make our paragraphs and writing in general more cohesive. But for now, we're just talking about it as writing grammar. So that was about run-on sentences. And the final common sentence error that we have for this episode, that is the comma splice. What is a comma splice? A comma splice occurs when two or more sentences or independent clauses are connected with a comma. And that is just the opposite. 
Because here, the problem is we cannot just put a comma and consider these two independent clauses or sentences as one. Now, how can we correct a comma splice? We can add a connecting word after the comma, or we can create two sentences from the one, or we can combine the most important words from the two sentences into one sentence and add a subordinating conjunction like because, since, or although. Now, let's take a look at some examples and understand better how the fixes go. Now, for example, the first sentence goes like, I went to Italy last summer, comma, it was a wonderful trip. And here, the problem is obvious. We have a comma splice. Now, a comma here is not sufficient to join the sentences together. By just putting a comma, we cannot join two sentences together just like that. We can do that by adding a word, adding a connecting word, that'll be fine. But here, we can either go by adding this connecting word. For example, we can say, I went to Italy last summer, comma, and it was a wonderful trip. That's fine, because now we have a connecting word. Or we can create two sentences. I went to Italy last summer, period, not comma. And the second sentence, it was a wonderful trip. Another example, only 120 students majored in art because they are worried about job opportunities. And here the problem is that I just joined these parts with a comma. I said only 120 students majored in art, comma, because they are worried about job opportunities. And that is not the way to go. If we want to join them together, we can consider because as a subordinating conjunction and get rid of the comma. So we say only 120 students majored in art because they are worried about job opportunities with no comma, and that is the way to go. Or we can say, because they are worried about job opportunities, comma, only 120 students majored in art. And here, we added a subordinate conjunction, which is because, but because we start with it, we can separate the two parts with a comma. So with that being said, that'll be everything I wanted to share with you today about writing grammar. We talked about commas, how we use them in sentences. We talked about sentence fragments, run-on sentences, and comma splice. And as I told you, maybe, yes, this is grammar. This is not writing as we used to do it, but it is very important because we're going to build on what we learned last time about the topic sentence and start developing the paragraphs and later, of course, essays. And we will need to write a lot of sentences. So it is a very good idea to learn how to write a proper sentence and to make sure we don't fall for these common traps, these common sentence errors. Now, with that being said, I cannot stress enough that it is very important to practice if you want to make sure you understand everything and you get the most of English Plus Podcasts. And we made that very easy by providing everything you need in a post on our website, englishpluspodcast.com. The link is in the description. Take the link, make the best of your English, improve your English with us, and there's no telling where you can go from there. Now, that being said, this is your host, Danny. Thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. I will see you next time.